Hello and welcome in my next tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can make this LCD screen monitor material in Cinema 4D Octane. So let's get started. Go to Create, Extensions, C4D Octane, Octane Material. Let's apply it to our screen. In my case, it's in here. And now we want to go to the material, click at the Node Editor. And in Node Editor, we want to click at the material, go to Basic, change the material type to Universal, and BRDF model to GGX Energy Preserving. Now I will zoom in slightly so we can see what's going on. And for now, we will work in Albedo so we can see better what's going on. I will apply image, which is the screenshot of my screen here. And first thing I notice is that I need to invert it. So I will, so I will add transform node here to the image texture, unlock aspect ratio, and just invert the scale here. So it's now inverted correct way, as we can see. Now we will add composite texture to it and create four layers here. We can already connect this image to first four layers from the top. And at the first one here at the bottom, we want to add float texture, which is basically gray scale value here. And we want just black color. If I saw node it, we can see it's just black. And this will be our base here. So we don't have to go here anymore. More stuff will be made here in these three layers. Actually, let's adjust it right away. So let's click at the first layer from the top, go to the blend mode and change it to red. Here we'll change the blend mode to green and here to... So basically what it does, if I disconnect those two layers at the top, we can see now in this layer, we only see the blue color. If I disconnect it and connect this one, we can see only green. And same thing here with the red one. And they also um, blend with each other. So right now we have both green and blue. And if I connect this one, we have red, green, and blue, which makes whole color palette here of our screenshot here, our texture. And now we want to go to the uh, custom pattern, which sometimes is not visible under the turbulence here. In this case, you just want to close it and click at the node editor again, and it fixed the issue. We can see it again. So let's click at the custom pattern and stripes, and we want to connect it to opacity of those layers. So for now, we want to connect only to one opacity. It doesn't matter which one. I will solo node it so we can see what's going on. And in here, we want to change the base color to white and stripe color one and two to black. What's cool about this node, I will show you in a second. Let's add the transform and let's scale it down. And what's cool about this node is that we can change the thickness of those black lines. If I set this one to red, so you can see. Right now, I'm adjusting the thickness of the black lines. And here, I can adjust the thickness of the red lines. So if I, for example, scale this like so, actually, let me just type in same value here, 0.3. And let's say I want to recompensate the fact that it's uh, a bit stretched. So I can just lower the scale X here, like so. But in this case, we also scaling our space between those lines. And we can recompensate that here by adjusting the thickness of this line, which is really cool. So I'm looking for something like, let me compare it with my previous material so we can see it. Uh, I think the scale is something like this. Okay, let's go with similar thing which is a bit smaller than what we have here. So I will slightly lower it a bit more. And what we want to do here is, of course, adjust the, the thickness of those lines. And here, we want to make sure those lines are thin enough. Actually, I think I can change the ratio here a bit. I think it's a bit too thin. Actually, it's still too thin. Something like this looks fine. Actually, a bit more. Basically, what you want uh, the best result is to just have three lines uh, to look like a square. Something like this is always looking nice here. This is quite good. And now I can actually adjust it. And because we will uh, have three of those stripes uh, duplicated here, like so, we want to make sure it's thin enough to fit two more uh, stripes here. So we will just change the thickness here to something like this. I will actually duplicate this camera here to zoom in because we want to have really close shot at it to um, adjust, adjust it uh, more precisely. And what I can tell from it is that definitely still want to adjust the thickness here to something like I think this, I can always adjust it later on. So now if I disable it, we have this stripes make opacity for this texture here. Also, I will actually disconnect it here for just now because this way we can see it better. 
and I can sell an audit to see if it, see it even better. And now we want to co we want to duplicate it. And basically, what it does is just, of course, adding the the opacity to texture, which only makes this texture appear when the stripes are white. But we will have copy of this texture to each layer, which represent different color. This way, we'll have this nice LCD uh, screen monitor effect in here. And what we just need to do here is basically offset those lines slightly so we get this nice RGB split. I will start from really big value just to don't uh, push it too far because right now it looks like it's next to each other, but it might like make few steps further than the line next to it because of the scale. So I will just make really small value like this. Okay, so I think it's something like maybe three. Or, okay, this looks actually just fine. So now that I have this value, I can just copy it and apply it to the last stripes I have here and just add minus before it. And now we have it on opposite side. And let's go back to the previous camera. And we already have this really nice, clean, sharp pixels here. And if we now apply our texture to it, now we add texture to the red channel, basically, to the layer with the blending mode of red. So it appears only where it's brighter from this image, now from the green. And when you apply it to the blue, we have full color here. And basically, if we zoom out, it looks like we don't have those individual colors. We only see them when we are really close. But once we start zooming out, we see more and more of the image. Uh, definitely need to adjust the scale. I think it's still too big. So I can back to it. But let's now focus on the of making it making it glow. So instead of albedo, of course, we want to change the albedo by the way to black. And let's also disable the cell node here. We want to make the albedo black just so it doesn't interfere with our emission here. So the emission will be texture emission, and we just want to connect it with a composite texture and definitely lower it down to like maybe even 10. Let's zoom out, maybe even a bit more. I mean, a bit less. Or actually, I can just click surface brightness, and I think 15 looks just fine. Maybe 10. Maybe 10. It's let's make 13, like in the middle. And also, let's um, let's scale it right away so it's not as big. Mm, so we want to uh, select all of the transform here to adjust all of them at once. Let's log aspect ratio, and let's just lower it slightly till it's in the right scale. I think something like this maybe looks fine. And of course, because we changed the scale, the offset needs to be adjusted. As we can see, it's a bit uh, in a weird position. So I will just get rid of it here and get rid of it here and see what works best again. Something around here. Two is too much, so 15 maybe. Yeah, 15 seems to be the new nice sweet spot here. And here just want to I just want to copy and paste it and add minus before it. Now if we take a look here, it already looks really great. We can see it looks right like, like really nice screen. Of course, yeah, that this layer is still needed here because otherwise it looks like this. So yeah. And if we change the albedo to white. We also get this, so this is why we need to have those black bases. Also, for the EOR, I like to adjust the specular on the second uh, layer, which I will show you in a in a second what I mean. Uh, basically, if I go to this, we have this reflection, and, and I actually prefer to use material layer for it instead of this um, reflection that we have here. So I'll add material layer. Actually, I will go to the material layer here and add layer group and add the specular and diffuse. The diffuse will be for fingerprints and specular will be just for the smudges and the screen itself. And there's a weird issue where when we have the specular layer here, we can see just fine the screen behind. But once I uh, set the specular here in the base material to zero, it just fades away, and if I disconnect it, it's there again, so it doesn't really make sense. So uh, what I like to do here is to just turn up the roughness all the way up, and you don't really want to mess with the EOR here, because it will just make similar thing, even though it shouldn't. So what we'll do here, I will just leave it at 1.5, maybe a bit less, like maybe um, 1.4, something like this. I can always go, of course, lower uh, here, 
with it mm, with the EOR to like 1.1 which doesn't really make sense of course it's not realistic but this way I can get much more darker black color here so it's really cool if you want to have a bit more depth in your colors on the screen you render uh, I will just leave it at as it was before so I will just leave it at 20 actually I think it was 20 and I will add here 1.4 which is a bit more realistic values for real stuff I guess and here in the specular what we can do is of course change the BRD model to GX energy preserving and let's go to EOR is fine we can change the actually we can lower it slightly to 1.4 so it's not as reflective and we can also change the roughness here slightly to like 0 0.2 maybe this way we this way we have those nice uh like um satin color so it's not as reflective like more more of the modern uh screens have something like this it doesn't really shine this much. Uh, we can add a bit less of it, like maybe 0 0.1 or maybe even 0 0.08, maybe something like this, just to have a bit more reflection so it looks a bit more interesting. And if you want to add some smudges, we can do it actually right here in a specular. Instead of the setting the roughness, we'll add, um, let's see, actually I will use the Grayscale Gorilla uh, texture, but you can use any texture you find. So I will just use the smudges and drop random one. The first one is probably fine. I will just apply it to roughness and it's a bit too much. I will just lower it to 0 0.1 power or maybe even 0 0.3 yeah let's maybe make it a bit more visible like this or we can just leave it as it is and add the gradient which will give us a bit more control over it so basically we want to change the black slider to a bit more grayish to make base roughness a bit less shiny and those big really rough patches we want to also lower till we get nice roughness here like so probably a bit more of the grayish black here and maybe a bit less here something like this i just want to make it a bit more subtle let me select this area to see how it goes i think it's fine for the purpose of the tutorial you can of course tweak it like for next 30 minutes if you of course want and here as in the diffuse layer let's connect it to the layer 2 we want to add texture to layer opacity also we will use the grayscale gorilla textures and we can find the nice one in, I think, smudges as well. Or actually, it was maybe dust. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's in the smudges. Okay, I just want this one, which is fingerprints. And I want to connect them to the layer opacity, actually. If we so node it, we can see the fingerprints. I think the scale is quite nice. I don't really have to mess with it. What I will do actually is just add the gradient as well here. Let's just lower the white color, which is the, basically the black color is what is not visible. And the white color here is what is visible in the opacity. So I want to lower the white color to value actually similar to this. I think it looks just fine, maybe a bit less. And let's see. So we have nice close up of the pixels. We have nice view at pixels here as well. Maybe we can spot some of the fingerprints somewhere like i think here there is a bit of it yeah it's here for example it will be of course more visible and different uh, light condition i don't want to make it too visible as well because um, otherwise it will take too much attention from the screen uh, but yeah we can see it here just fine i think we can see the smudges we can see nice fingerprints here and also what's cool about this uh pixels we still get this nice uh artifact maybe if i select this area you can see those like sometimes when you take a picture of monitor or the phone you sometimes see those colors here appearing like a small artifact so it's actually here as well which is really cool it just adds a bit of more real to your screen instead of flat emissive material which i find really cool and i think that's it for this tutorial hope you find it entertaining and you learned something new today my goal on this channel is to upload one tutorial every week i wasn't able to upload it uh, last time i get a bit sick but now i am back on the road and i will keep uploading weekly tutorials and yeah i think that's it see you in the next one take care